welcome to On Set. I think I'm here. <laughs> once, once again, I'm here by my, well, not by myself. No. I always say that, that's not very fun. I'm here with Marissa. I am Daniel Norton, and we're doing a uh, workshop today on balancing the light. One of the questions I get, I get a lot of questions, right? People say, Daniel, and then they ask whatever they're gonna ask. But one of the things they ask a lot about is ratios. What is the ratio of this? And I think ratios are good to know, I guess. It doesn't hurt, I've done videos on them, we talked about them. But I wanna talk about how, like, really how you light somebody. Like, we're gonna come in here and just build this shot, and we're not gonna worry about exact ratios. We can figure them out after the fact. And they're useful, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But the main thing here is, how do we get a shot to kinda look the way we want it to look? Have that three-dimensional pop be clean. That's what we're gonna go for. And this is gonna be a balanced shot with lighting. I'm gonna use kind of classic tools that we'll use for portraiture, so nothing weird. And uh, that way, you know, this is, a, this is something you could do at home. Let me know how the sound is, because it was kind of a little bit weird, and I don't know if it's too loud or soft. Um, let me just go over here. I am by myself again. Canada, London. Not London, Canada, I assume. Uh, <laughs> uh, Switzerland. I saw Italy earlier, Australia, Arizona, early in the day for you guys. Sound is good. All right, perfect. All right, let me set this thing up. I'm going to get rid of this little help screen thing here. Okay, I think we're in a good spot here. Okay, so as usual, if this is your first time, uh, did I ever say who I was? I am Daniel North. <laughs> Welcome to Adorama TV. If, you, if you're not subscribed to the channel, I recommend you do it. It's a, a free subscription. You just press the button. Uh, so I'm going to try to walk through the gear as I use it. If I forget to say some, what something is, please do ask. I never did get that wide angle lens to work for the people that watched the last thing. So I, I don't, Seth, Seth is missing. He's not really missing. We don't want to set an alarm. Apparently he's, 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 at, a, he's, at, he's at a convention or something. Cause that, you know, he's a world traveler. He's famous. Seth's all over the place. So we're here by ourselves again, but that's okay. We can handle it. All right. So again, we're just working with the white box here, the studio, keeping it really simple. One of the very first things, and this is going to be, we're going to go with like a kind of a standard three-quarter portrait, basically. So this is a Nikon Z6 II. I have affixed a, uh, let's see, this is a 24 to 120 lens, uh, which Seth recommended and I like. And uh, I'm going to set it around 85 millimeters to start with. And the first thing we want to do is establish basically our composition stuff, but we want to establish that none of the light in the space is going to affect our shot. So the way we do that, the classic black frame as I call it, we set our camera so that basically we get nothing if we make an image. Shutter speed at the highest within the normal range, 200 in the case of this camera. ISO at the lowest within the normal range, within the normal range, so 100. And then we adjust our aperture. It's a mirrorless camera, I can see right through the back of it until basically it's a black frame. This is my studio, I shoot in here all the time. 5.6 is usually pretty good, but we'll still test it anyway. So no flash is gonna fire. We're just gonna take a shot, and we're gonna come over here to capture one. And we can see over here in capture one, off to the side here, we have a black frame. If we wanna basically know how dark this frame is, we can come over here to our adjustments, grab our exposure slider. I mean, you can look at your, your histogram, it's not all the way as black, obviously. And we can drag, drag this up. We want to get a couple stops. That's basically our goal. So when we start seeing detail on her, like around there, we stop. 2.13. So about two stops underexposed. That's fine. You might say, oh, uh, why not shoot F8 or F16 or something to really make it dark? I don't need to do that. And that's just going to burn up flash power, right? It's going to make the recycle slower. Not worth it. You want to find that kind of sweet spot where the room is dark, but you're not overdoing the power. That's really the key. That's why we set it where we set it. If I wanted a more shallow depth of field, I'd have to do something like high speed sync, but there's really no reason to do that for this. The wall is the wall. Whether it's in focus or not, nobody really cares. Okay, let's see. Hello, Jack. Uh, am I gonna use a light meter to calculate the ratio between the lights and the sources? No, we're not using ratios, really. I mean, you're always using ratios. Most people are not gonna go, you know, this is a one to 3.2567 ratio. They're just gonna look and see a shot they like. That's how our eyes work. That's how most of us work these days. Light meters are great when you need to set shots up, and I use them sometimes, but we're not gonna use a light meter today. We're gonna use a light meter uh, in the sense that we're gonna use TTL through the lens metering, but we're gonna, eyeball it. And then we can figure out what our ratio is after if we really want to, if I can find my light meter, I'll have to dig it out. But anyways, 
Here we are. I'm now gonna turn my remote on. It's on top of the camera, which will allow me to see Marissa. So I can see what my framing is. That looks pretty good. Okay, so now, first step, we're gonna add our key light. We're gonna build this one light at a time to show you how I determine where we want things to be. So we're gonna walk through this. It's gonna be a pretty simple kind of three light setup. Maybe we'll throw a fourth light, third light if we, uh, fourth, third? Fourth light if we feel like it. <laughs> but no, we're not gonna use a light meter. Uh, a balance light would be a C stand. Yeah. I have balanced many a light off on a C stand, but we won't do that today. All right, so I have three light sources that I'm going to possibly use. I'm really small here. So let me switch this so you guys can see. I need like a remote so I can do it like this. Um, I have three, three lights, three, three modifiers, I should say a beauty dish, a two by three softbox, and a strip softbox. Let's start using the beauty dish as our key. It might not be the best key, but we'll, we'll start that way. So a beauty dish is nice because it's going to give us, in this case, because I have a grid on the front of it, control. The grid is gonna reduce our spread uh, down to, I think 25% with this one. I stuck this on backwards, I can't read the tag, but I think it's 25%, or 25 degrees rather, with the grid on a beauty dish. It's gonna reduce that down. This is in a Profoto B10. Now I have B10s and I have B1Xs, B10s are 250 watt seconds, B1Xs are 500. Why am I using the weakest light that I have on the key light? Well, because probably, in all probability, it's gonna be the light that's the closest to her. Thus, I need less power. So when you're thinking about what lights to use, sometimes your most powerful light is not the light you wanna use the key. In fact, it's usually not. I almost always put my most powerful light as a background light. All right, so I'm gonna tilt the light down slightly. I'm going to raise it above eye level, so this, the center of the light's above eye level. And with the beauty dish especially, we need to be wary of where it aims because that grid's gonna make it tight. So I'm just gonna turn on my modeling light for a second so we can see. That looks a little low actually. Bring it up. I want the center of the light more or less on our eyes. Now I'm not gonna do what I typically would do with the beauty dish, which is put it in the middle <laughs> uh, and do like a butterfly light. And the reason for that is because then this other stuff won't be as dramatic and you won't see it. So we're going for drama here. I'm in TTL, TTL means through the lens metering. I'm going to turn off any additional lights even though they're not technically on right now. I'm just using the A group in straight TTL. Marissa is gonna look at me and we'll take a shot and see what it looks like. All right, there we go, very dramatic. Okay, so we can see where I'm trying to build effectively a three-dimensional portrait with detail, with pop, with contrast. So we've got our key light now, the main light of our shot. It's defining her, the shape of her face. It's defining because it's a hard-ish light, right? It's punchy. It's going to give us that light in the forehead and around the eyes, dropping off to a mid and then off into shadows very quickly. It drops off quickly because it's close to her. It doesn't spread everywhere because the grid's on there, right? This is how we're modulating or, or modulating is not the right word. I'm using a lot of weird words today. That's how we're controlling our light. We're trying to create a certain sense of our light. Okay. Uh, budding photographer from London. Firefighter. Nice. Uh, Marissa doesn't need a beauty light. She looks stunning behind candlelight. The less light you use on Marissa, the better she looks, honestly. Like, <laughs> Dark screen is best. <laughs> exactly. That black frame was the best shot ever of Marissa. All right, so you might think that You might think the next thing to put up is going to be the fill light, but I'm not going to add the fill light yet because first I, I want to add shape. Right now we have kind of a dramatic shot and it's nice and it kind of almost works on some level. We want to, what I call, cut her out of the background, right? We want to create, what we're looking for is dark to light to bright to, to, to neutral to light. So we're creating this three dimensional shape, right? We need that. If everything's flat, it'll be flat, right? So we're trying to get some shape going. What we need is some, oh, oh, look at that. She, right here, look, look, all you have to do is just Google it with your watch. You don't need this video. <laughs> <laughs> it literally wasn't me either. It was a Gavin Hoey video, if you can imagine it. No, it wasn't, that would be funny though. Listen, if they're gonna send me a video on my watch, I want some Gavin Hoey. All right, so let's, let's cut her out of the background now. So for that, I'm gonna use 
a secondary light, which is a, did I switch it so you can see me again? Yes, I did. Um, this is a, might be over too far. Let me switch cameras. Well, you can see that. Eh, I'll switch cameras. I always set up this other camera, so I might as well use I always set up this camera, so I might as well use it. All right, so this is a strip box, classic kind of separation light. Now, I know a lot of people back in the 70s, when all those photo books were first written, told you to use a, like a grid on the back for the hair light or a hard light, but you don't want to use a hard light for hair light normally. The reason for that is you want it to spread out evenly and create a nice glow. If you hit her, boom, with something really hard in the back of the head, she's going to brighten up one part of it. We want a strip of light down her, thus the strip light. The other thing we want to keep in mind here is we want our light to feather off and into her. So we're not going to point it, here, I'll turn the model light on. We're not going to point it right at her. I mean, that could work, but what we really want is more like this. We want the light to come around and kind of just rim and just, just kiss the side of her hair and face. Okay, so that's pretty good. For this light, I'm going to keep it more or less level to the ground. And we're going to go like this. That should be a good place to start. This is in the, I'm going to change my group here. I'm going to make this the C group. Okay. I'm going to come back around to my camera. Let's take a quick look. I want to show you guys what we got so far. I'm going to turn these off. I know you love when I turn the lights off. Well, that's not too bad. Yeah, it's daylight savings now, right? So now we can. Yeah, is it daylight savings or is it not daylight savings? I never know which one's which. But in any case, you can see me now because there's light. I'm going to have to. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take my C light and turn it on. I'll put that modeling light on so you guys can see it. And then I'll put the key light on. Oop. So we can see it. And we can see how we're going to get the shape on her like that. All right, so she's looking that way. Turn towards me a little bit. There you go. Yeah, that's good. Perfect. Here we go. Okay, I just have it in TTL, so the exposure could be a little wonky, as well as her expression for some reason. Um, but it's actually not terrible. Okay, we got a little light on her nose, which I don't love, but other than that, this is looking pretty decent. We have a bright highlight, right? It's bright. We have, again, neutral and dark, all the ways to our nice uh, bright skin tone on this side. So we're creating dimension across her. And because we're using a strip, the light comes all the way down her face, on her neck, on her shoulder. We get that whole nice thing. And, and as a bonus, the background now is a bit of a, kind of a light grayish because some of that light is kind of bouncing around. If you didn't want that, you could either use a black background, which is what I would suggest if you want a black background, or you could move the whole set further from the wall. But I actually want it. I like that kind of charcoal look. We're gonna have her look a little bit more towards the beauty dish in the final shot, but that's pretty decent right there. I think we're going really fast again. It must be this uh, white chocolate mocha. <laughs> By the way, happy Tuesday. We're not, this is unusual, right? What, they asked me, Fernando was like, hey Daniel, you wanna do it on a Tuesday? And I was like, taco Tuesday? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, yeah. And there was no tacos here. I'm just gonna point that out. I thought there'd be tacos, no tacos. I am also the producer and, and the catering, so it's my own fault there's no tacos. I, I, but I can still complain about it. You know, I was just in Wisconsin, and I had a cheese curd taco. Oh, sounds very Wisconsin. Yeah, it is. It's basically like fried cheese in, in, in place of whatever the meat would be in the taco. Okay, it's just a mozzarella stick. <laughs> it's a mozzarella stick taco. Let me tell you something. Well, except it's not mozzarella. It was cheddar. Okay. It was cheddar. My, 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 my Boston came out there. Uh, <laughs> how to remove the highlight uh, on the nose. She's going to turn her face. That's how we're going to do that. Uh, could you achieve the full contour of light with a regular softbox? Yes. OK, good. So there's some good questions here. I'm going to light on for a second here while I talk about cheese. I feel like we need to make like a little cheese break in between each. I got some really good cheese. I got cheese dice as well. We'll talk about that later. Anyways. So a couple, couple really quick questions. How do we get the dot off of her nose? That is just simply a pose. If you wanted her looking exactly the way she was, you would just feather the light further 
that would be one way to do it, but it's really just because her nose is you know, turned towards the light. If we turn her just a hair towards the beauty dish, it'll take care of it. We could do several things. So there's multiple ways we could move it. We could turn, feather the light out further, that would help. We could move the light further back, that would help because it would change its position, or she can turn her face. In this case, I think turning her face is gonna be the correct thing because I wanna get good shadow on the other side of her face anyways, so turning her face is gonna be the answer. Uh, somebody else asked, could you use a full-size softbox instead of, the, uh, instead of the strip box? Yes, 100%. And the thing about that is, if, if you use a full-size softbox, it will work totally fine. The only downside to it is that you're kind of wasting light. Wasn't that a, was that Gin Blossoms? That was an album name. Let me know what album that was. Yeah, let me know who wrote the, no, no, was it The Wallflowers? Let, let me know, it's a, it's a, it's a record. It's before Morris's time. It's a, it's a 90s record. She wasn't around for that. All right, I hope I'm muting myself when I cough. If not, that's probably terrible in the microphone, so I apologize. Okay, anyways, two good questions. Uh, if you had cheese curds accessible, I hope you had proper food. I don't know what that is. Just finished my last bit of cheese curd. <laughs> it's a cheese chat. Cheese chat, you, see, you can tell Seth's not here. We would be in so much trouble right now with all this cheese talk. He'd be looking at me going, really? They're talking about cheese now in the chat. But it would be worth it, well worth it. Don't tell Seth. All right, <laughs> okay, so let's make those quick corrections. Let's have her turn her face slightly to the side so we get that uh, light off her nose, and we'll go from there. Let me switch to here. Okay, so I'm gonna have you, and again, you can turn your modeling lights on if that makes it easier for you. Turn, yep, there you go. You can turn your shoulders towards the towards that light, and then your face towards this light. There we go. That should do it. Yeah, there it is. Cool. I'm in TTL. Oh, I'm in TTL, so you may notice that uh, the exposure is shifting slightly as well. What we really should be doing is locking it in, which I did not do, but we'll we'll go back and fix that. It's a little bit brighter than I think I'd like it now, but we can make a quick adjustment. Um, but we can see now that we don't have it on her nose at all. I mean, this is a reflection on her nose, but that's just the shine. You can powder that, or I actually like it. A lot of people are very much into making people super, super matte. Uh, I like a little shine. It makes people uh, look more three-dimensional. Okay, so a couple, couple things we'll do here. I'm going to have, uh, we'll, we'll split the difference on the nose. I'm going to adjust the power. And one thing you can do is if you do a shot like this and you're like, oh, I like the, I like the ratio, but it's just a little bit too bright. We can actually grab the exposure slider and bring it down to where we like it. So probably about there. And I look and I go, oh, about a third of a stop. Then I can just come over to my lights and adjust them. We don't have to take another shot yet. We can just, let's go. I'm gonna switch to manual. And I'm gonna bring both lights down a third of a stop. And then we'll see, good eyes to me though, good. And that should give us a, if you are doing something like this, by the way, and you keep, like, she moved back a little bit, if you, if you keep seeing the thing on her nose and then you're fighting it, then move the light, right? <laughs> but the first option is just to see if the pose works. Sometimes it's easier just to do that. And I think we got that there. It's nice and even. We're getting a nice light coming across. I'm gonna come in a little closer as well. Let me change my composition slightly now that we're getting lit up. Come a little taller, a little closer. Now you might be saying, Daniel, can't you just zoom the lens longer? Yes, I could. But the reason why I don't do that is because the proximity of you to the subject sets uh, the kind of the compression and how it feels, and I like to have that like closer feel. So for me, I would rather get closer. Good. That should give me a tighter composition that I want. There we go. There we go. That's nice. So now we're getting the beautiful blue in her eyes. We're getting a nice shadow on her face. They've got this kind of dark natural, and then we have the light natural here. I may lower the beauty dish just a smidge as far as its position, but I think otherwise these, these two lights are in a good position. Okay. Uh, what other modifier would I use instead of a beauty dish? Well, now, what other modifier would I use instead of a beauty dish? Let me preface this by saying, a beauty dish looks the way a beauty dish looks. <laughs> so there is no like, what would you use instead so it looks like a beauty dish? But to get a similar kind of light, I would either use a small umbrella, probably a shoot-through umbrella, or 
more likely a small softbox, a small octagon if you want the round. Um, you are not going to get exactly the same look because a beauty dish is kind of um, unique in the way that the pan is really shallow and flat in the back, so it does create a different kind of light. But at the same time, unless you're doing a very something super specific or you've shot a lot of stuff with beauty dishes, you're probably not going to notice that much of a difference. So a small, like two foot octagon with a grid on it would probably be, uh, would probably give you a similar result. Or me personally, I would use an umbrella because I have a beauty dish. So if I'm not using it, it's because I want a different look. In fact, I did a video. Was that with you? Where I took the two umbrellas and stuck them together. Check that out. That's on this channel. I think I call it something like inexpensive beauty. Oh, like, yeah, that was with me. yeah, yeah, that was with Marissa. I used your kit to do it, I think. Yeah, you did. I lowered the light a tiny bit to try to get it a little more centered on her eyeball so that it's not so bright in the forehead. Um, now I'm gonna come in, this is actually looking really good. Now this is actually, you might think this is the, the easiest light. The fill light here is actually one of the trickiest things to do right, because that actually looks pretty darn good. What we wanna do now is create a balance between how flat we want our image in order to get as much detail as possible, but not lose that like dynamicism. So we're going to come in and for, for the fill light, I'm going to use a soft box. Okay. What are we looking at now? Let me go back to her because I don't know. Okay. <laughs> There's lots of cheese stuff going on. What focal length am I shooting at? 85 millimeters. Uh, best one light modifier for a group of 10 or more. <laughs> Good luck with that. In general, if you are shooting groups or anything like that, and you're not trying to create really specific light, use an umbrella. That would be my answer for that. But honestly, if you're shooting that many people, you're probably far enough back and you probably need the power. You might just want to use a, a bare head because the umbrella might not matter at all. When I very first got started, you've seen enough of Marissa. All right. When I very first got started in photography, I worked for a wedding photographer and usually shoot a lot of big groups. He would just use the bare, like, reflector head on two flashes, and it looked fine. I mean, again, when you're that far away, in order to get that light to spread out, to create even light over everybody, you've got to back it up. And at that point, it starts getting really small anyways. Okay, this light is going to be our fill. A couple of things you're going to know when you walk into this. Number one, this light is going to affect the background on some level. I have a white, shiny wall. Again, if I wanted a black background or even a dark gray background, I should use a background that's that color if I really want to achieve it. Because I don't care and I'm trying to create something in this space, I'm fine with it getting a little bit lighter because that's what's going to happen. I want my fill light to be on axis, meaning I'm putting it behind the camera because I don't want it to create its own set of shadows. I'm, I'm also going to put it slightly to this side. And I know that probably might seem a little strange, but the reason for that is I want all the light to feel like it's coming from one direction in this case, because I'm creating something more dramatic. She's also looking this way. So I may turn it horizontally, which is a you know, pro tip there, and up, and that should be pretty good. Now, what we want to do here is establish our fill light, and the, way, the best way to do that, I found, is to turn everything else off. So let's go back here. Okay, so we're looking at Marissa that well-crafted light. I'm gonna come up here and turn off everything but this fill light. I'm gonna go back to TTL, and I'm just gonna make a very basic shot. And we're gonna see what we get. This should be pretty terrible. Yeah, okay, it's exactly what you would imagine. Terrible. <laughs> but we're not looking for great light here. What we're looking for is fill. So we can see here that obviously it's too bright and just flat and boring. So. I'm gonna come down here to my exposure slider and I'm gonna bring this down to where I feel like my shadows should sit, which is probably somewhere around here. This is just shy of three stops down from where I'm at. Now, how do I know that's where the shadow should fit? Again, I'm getting a feel for it. So I'm gonna go turn this back where it was. I'm gonna to go to this light, switch to manual, return it down three stops. And now at this point, I'm just going to turn everything back on. And here's where we're going to need to finesse. But let's get started and we'll see what we get. Okay, so you're going to look slightly this way dramatically and then back at me. Okay. This should be all the lights if I did everything right. Yes, I did. Okay, good. And now we can see that somehow the backlight did not go off. But that's okay. 
We don't need all the lights to go off. It's only a live stream. <laughs> Let's try that again. Here we go. Good. All right. There it is. Okay, now we've got, okay, good. For a second, I didn't think I had it on the right screen. I do that so much. Admire this image for a second while I sip my coffee. <laughs> Does Gavin have a short tether cable? We can switch, Gavin. Come on over. We'll, we'll, we'll mail them to each other. Although, it would probably cost more to mail the tether cables back and forth than it would for each of us just to buy our own. Uh, yeah, this is, they do make it a, an extender. You know what it is? I'm just being cheap. I need to get one of those remote, the, the wireless ones. They have wireless ones now that are pretty. All right, let's see what we got here. What well, focal length? Okay, I answered that already. Well, does the length of the strip box matter much? Okay, so that's a good question as well. Okay, so before we get to that picture, which you've already seen, and you're judging Marissa, remember that she's very sensitive. Um, good question about the strip box. Why, does the size of the strip box matter? Yes, right, for two reasons. The size of the strip box, or anything you use, is going to, be rel is going to determine its relative hardness and softness. Now, we don't want the light to be too soft, because we do want that, especially that background light, we want that like forward facing shadow so we get that like definition, especially when we're gonna go real bright with it. So we want it to be small but not too small. So I don't necessarily want a huge uh, softbox back there, but I don't want it to be too small because then it'll be too hard, so you gotta figure that out. But they do make longer strip boxes, and I find that longer strip boxes are generally more useful to me when I'm doing full length shots. Not because they're bigger and softer, but because they just have more coverage, especially when you put them in close. So does it matter? Yes, mostly because of the hardness softness, not because coverage, because we have plenty of coverage with that strip box. That's a good question. Uh, painter, I love how the lighter was, oh, thank you. Boy, that's a, thank you, Timothy. That is a very, very good compliment. Right, do you like, I'm going for this kind of painterly, you know, when I, when I went to school, I'm gonna go back, tell you a story, because we're going so fast. When I went to photo school, I said, you know, I'm going to be a photographer. And I went, I signed up for photo school, and I went there the first year, and I looked at my class schedule, and it was like theory of color, figure drawing, painting, graphic design. I'm like, where's all the photography classes? Foundation, right? Do you want, this is what helps. If we just jump right in and go, I have a camera I can shoot, it's great. But it's nice to kind of look at other art forms to see how they operate. And this is very, very much where I try to get my lighting uh, inspiration is from painting, because... It, the no place else, well, many places else, I guess, but painting is like the, the place where you take something completely flat and make it dimensional, and they do amazing jobs, great painters. I am not a good painter. I'll just point that out right now. All right, let's see what else we got here. <laughs> Kevin's tether cable can stretch all the ways across. Well, uh, let's see. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, do you worry about flyaway hair that show up under lighting? Retouch or leave alone? That is, a question, that is a good question. I don't usually care. Sometimes the subjects do. <laughs> so it's good to ask them. I, honestly, if, if I see flyaway hair in a shot, and it's a shot that it matters, I try to fix it on set. I find that it's faster to stop for five minutes and have the hair fixed than it is to retouch out flyaway hairs in 20, 30, 40 pictures in the end. So for me, because I'm not fast at retouching, I generally will fix it on the set. That is a good question though. Uh, she is beautiful. Well, thank you, I am beautiful. <laughs> All right, so that was really easy. Do you wanna, do you wanna shoot one of me, Marissa? Yeah. Okay, because they said I was beautiful. I need a new headshot because I'm, I'm going to, you know, try to do more. I'm wearing my hat today. Okay. Should I stand like, like this, like bold? Okay. No, no. She's got to get in there. She's getting in there. What are you doing? Oh. Are you adjusting my tripod? Oh, it's crooked. Cool. Ding. Okay. Right, 
feels really All right, hot. Daniel. Um, like, look away and then look to the camera. Look like this? Yeah, yeah. Okay, oh. nice. Perfect. Oh, that's wow. Not, that's not terrible. I don't know why I always look down at me. Oh. I had that weird half eye open thing that I do. That's a very classic <laughs> Popeye Daniel shot. Here's, here's, a, here's a tip. If somebody does not have a lot of hair on the top of their head, don't shoot above them. <laughs> <laughs> and Marissa learns. Oh, my God. Next time, Sharina's now going to have your bald head be a reflector for her. Wow. Like you did for me. Wow. <laughs> Do you see what I have to deal with here? You see this? <laughs> okay, so questions. Great job. All right, perfect. God damn it. Why? Why would I take my glasses off? I love my glasses. Oh, you know, I have my glasses off in my license picture. I went to go get my license when I first moved to New York, and they were like, take your glasses off. And I'm like, but I always wear my glasses. So I'm going like this. You're smizing. <laughs> that's really nice. I'm smizing. That's, that's the true smize right there. Uh, we're going to talk about eyeliner, eyeliner reflector. Oh, huh. I did a video for that when it first came out. Let's see. Uh, Kevin only has a small home studio. She has tether cable, probably the same level. <laughs> it's all about relative space. Okay, so, so the eyeliner, for people who don't know, is I think it's Westcott that makes it. It's like this scoop of light, uh, reflector, I should say, that you put like under somebody's, like in front of them, like a chin, to get like a, a kickback. You know, if you're going to shoot that kind of shot a lot, then it's probably worth it for you. I, I don't do lots of like... Um, and I don't mean this is negative. I don't know how to say it. This doesn't sound negative. Assembly line type pictures where like lots of people come in. So I don't tend to want something that's fixed like that. But it's really cool. I've definitely used it. Like I said, I did the, the first video for it. Um, it does create a really beautiful uh, eye reflection, which is kind of the point of it. If I have a very large source behind, can shoot in front of it and not cause a shadow. That is absolutely true. Uh, let's see. Could you set up a second light? whilst turning off the main, i.e. one light at a time, all lights at the end? Oh, sure. I can do that, and I actually did do it as we we're setting up, but let's, this, is, this is good for people to come later. So we're gonna go through a series, and then we can actually assemble it all in Photoshop. No, we're not gonna do that. All right, so. Picture of me. <laughs> Let me reframe this properly. All right, so we'll start off with the key light. <laughs> you cannot make the faces I made. It's my patented face. You're also looking the wrong way because the key light's that way. Yes, there it is. All right, I left all the lights on because she was making a funny face. All right, so let's turn <laughs> the other lights off. This is, this is my, <laughs> hold on. That is, that's pretty good, actually. All right, let me know in the, in, the, in the comments who does this look better. Is it me or Marissa? Let's, uh, let's, let's get some, uh, some feedback here. I, I kind of like, I think I, I think I did it better, actually. <laughs> All right, so let's do this. Okay. I've turned off everything but the key light. So, Marissa's is going to look this way slightly. Back at me. Good. Okay, hold still. That's just the key light. I'm assuming a picture showed up, right? This will be key light plus background light, or a separation light, I should say. And then now we're adding the fill. Pictures are appearing, right? <laughs> Good. Oh, oh shoot. <laughs> I had to catch her a couple times because she was moving around. There we go. Okay, so we can see that drama for your mama with a smile. And that's basically your, your, your complete shot, right? This is the one where you're like, you shoot that picture and you're like, oh yeah, I'm cool, I'm doing fashion. Oh, yeah, cool. Then you add this second light here and you're like, ooh, very dramatic. But then this here, the final shot, you know, it gives you that depth that you want. Now I could, you know, you could get the background darker again by doing a number of things, but I think this works pretty well as far as tone, tone goes. If you, you know, especially since if I'm gonna do more of a happy picture, if you want the background a little bit darker, what you'd have to do is get this fill light off the background, which is not impossible, but it's not ideal for what we're doing. 
Creating the strip would make it less hot as well. Um, true. Mine looks more natural, exactly. Uh, yeah, so right, if you put the grid, so what a grid will do is, the grid's gonna do a couple of things on a, on a strip box. It's going to narrow the spread, like anything, right? Which means it's gonna probably, I mean, at this distance, it's still gonna hit her whole self. It will it, pop the contrast a little bit, uh, making it a little bit darker as well. It, it kind of creates this like different contrast level yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think it's too bright, but if you thought it was too bright, you could also just turn the power down. If that's if that's the uh, if that's the uh, the reason why you're saying that, Kim, I'm not sure the reason for the comment because I don't see a previous comment that you're applying to. I don't know if you're just. But also, grid. You should also know that adding a grid to the light will make it less bright. If I keep the power the same, I could just turn it up. It's only at like a third power, so you could you could still get a bright light like this with the grid on there. All right, cool. We're Yep, let's, okay, now that we did this, let's play around a little bit. Let's see if we can get, well, let's get this shot good first so we have it for the thumbnail for next time. <laughs> it's, we're all about thumbnail making around here. Turn your body this way. Yeah, don't look at me like blue steel. Yeah, okay, then there's regular steel. <laughs> good. Nothing, by the way, is better than the sound of the lights going beep, beep, beep like that. When I was a uh, photo assistant many, many years ago, and many of you older photographers might remember this, lights did not beep. <laughs> so one of the assistants would stand next to the slowest of the lights and go, ready, ready, ready. I am not lying. That's literally what you did. <laughs> Although it was never that fast. Okay. Uh, does newer cameras, light meters, absolutely necessary. Uh, I don't think it has anything to do with the newer cameras. Oh, just thinking out loud, okay. All right, so Kay, uh, Kim K, just thinking out loud about the grid. Good point, though. Uh, so, uh, do you feel uh, with newer cameras, light meters are necessary? Um, it's not so much the camera that makes the light meter necessary or not, it's the fact that we have TTL, in most lights now, it's much more common than it used to be. And we can see things right away, which means digital, which doesn't mean new. I mean, we've had digital cameras for a long time. So really what ends up happening is when you are, you know, back in the day, back in the day, you're shooting film, right? So you gotta go, okay, well, I think these lights are in the right spot because I don't have TTL. So I take a picture of a Polaroid and then I wait two minutes to look at it and go, no, they're too bright, let me adjust them. So a light meter saved you time, it saved you money, it was fast. With digital, you can check it really quickly. So it's not super necessary for a lot of occasions. I still recommend owning one if you have the budget and if you're, especially if you're working you know, uh, more professionally, just because it can speed things up. And there are situations where a light meter is going to make things super useful. Like for instance, going into a space. If I walk into a space, let's say to shoot an event, I'll walk around with my light meter and figure out where the average exposure in the space so I can set my lights the same way we did here, right? But I have my light on the top of my camera, I'm gonna walk in there and go, okay, well the light in the space is a 30th of a second at 5.6, 100 ISO, so I know if I wanna keep the room a little bit dark, I can shoot at a 60th and then add my flash to fill in, right? So that gives you some ideas. If I'm shooting Marissa standing here, being able to use TTL, it, it doesn't speed things up for me at all. If I was here and Marissa was the CEO of Marissa Incorporated, which she is, and she was like, I, you'll, I'm gonna be there in five minutes, you have 10 minutes to shoot me, I would walk in there, meter everything first, right? And then when she steps in, I'd be 90% there. So there's reasons to have a light meter. I wouldn't say they're not useful, but I think there's other things that are probably better investments early on than that. Like I would invest in Capture One and tethering before I would invest in a meter for most people. Roy Photo Video. Are you hashtagging yourself? <laughs> 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 oh man, you can certainly hear them pop. Yes, that's true. You could hear the lights pop. You said no when they were recycled. Uh, oh, do they? Uh, do the lights? Well, you know what? Um, so they're saying why they default to them being off. I don't, I don't know. Um, understand your histogram. Yes, exactly. Super important. 
can you uh, can you estimate your light setting immediately with certain level of experience? Yes. Sounds okay. Good, good. Gavin sold me on the Sconic. Oh yeah. Well, there you go. 308 is a great light meter. So Gavin's dead on with that. If you're going to invest in a light meter, it, you know, it all depends also where you are and what you want to do in photography, right? If you just want to set up your lights and take some fun pictures and make some fun portraits, do you need a light meter? Hmm. If you love the, the tech of it, right? Especially if you're one of those people like me that likes the science of photography, a light meter is just a fun tool to have to understand like where and how light works is such a fun thing to know. But it's, I, again, I don't think it's, if you, if you offered me a light meter or I could tether and I had to make this shoot, I would tether in a heartbeat. Because again, I can look right at the computer. I can shoot every one of my lights separately. I can adjust them up and down. I can see the actual raw file. I can show my client the photos. So for that $300, that's what I would invest in personally, but it's not that I don't have a light meter. Does Kevin's light meter work? Uh, in a big studio. Of course it does. The 308 is a great light meter. Here, let me get my light meter. Marissa, entertain the people for a second, please. <clears throat> That's what you're doing? You're dancing? I don't have my meter. She doesn't have Oh, no, I don't have my light meter. No. Okay, hold on, guys. Uh-oh, dead air. This is dead air. Marissa's dancing. Marissa's dancing. We're, this is not dead air. Marissa's dancing. Marissa's over there dancing. I think I did this before and I couldn't find the light meter either. What do I do with it? Oh, you know where it is? It's with my 4x5 camera. Let me see. Did you just take a picture? <laughs> Are you taking pictures of yourself? They can't see the Mina, thankfully. You should, be, you should be happy that you can't see those. Okay, so I will bring a light meter on the next demo. It's, it's in my bag somewhere. Someone says got a headache. <laughs> and he doesn't know why, exactly. Okay, Marissa, poem. Yeah, she didn't uh, do a poem. With... No, I asked Marissa to tell a joke one time, and it was absolutely dirty. So we cannot have that happen again. No jokes from Marissa. <laughs> she, uh, 308. Oh, interesting. Okay, so this is a, a good question too. Maybe we'll do a whole light meter thing because I, I don't want to be lost there. We'll, we'll change the setting. We gotta take at least one more picture. So here's the thing with light meters, just like anything, and this is something I say, and the light meter crowd usually blasts me, so get ready for this. The light meter is just gonna give you an idea of where it thinks the exposure should be just like TTL. You have to, based on your equipment, the way that you like your lights to be, your understanding of photography, make a decision. A good light meter will be consistent though. So if you have your 308 light meter and you're using it and then you go back to your computer and it's always a third of a stop under or a third of a stop over, you just have to know that and you just set your camera appropriately. Or what we used to do back in the day is, because you do it for different films, is you would just set the ISO in the light meter to compensate for that difference. So the light meter should be consistent. It's not always gonna be exactly what your camera is. So you gotta know that. You can't trust any piece of equipment. That's why I say seeing the picture is better than anything. Okay, let's see. Let's bang out one thing per day. Yeah, they want to do a joke now. We'll do that on my, hold on. Sebago Lake in Maine, nice. What? <laughs> I used to spend my summers in New Hampshire, and uh, that was pretty close to there. I won't, we won't give anything else away. <laughs> let's change up one. Let's change up one more shot. Let's let's just mix it up a little bit because we got some time. I thought this was going to take longer. I think I'm faster than I used to be. Somebody asked a question about using a full size softbox as a hair light, so let's do that. By the way, I probably already forgot what I was using. This is a. Uh, Shamira Pro 2 softbox, small. So small in Shamira is 24, 24 by 32. This right here, the strip is a one by three Pro Photo OCF. 
And as I think I noted that this, the beauty dish was a beauty dish. <laughs> the beauty dish was a beauty dish. OK, so let's go back to this. We're going to use a full-size softbox here now as our hair light. And we'll see what the difference will be. I'm going to turn off the fill light. And let's go over here. I'm going to leave all the settings exactly the same because that's how I roll. And I'm going to have Marissa look this way to really mess with it. Right. So what we can see here is a much different feel, right? I mean, great as you turn to the side. But this softbox has much more coverage. So we're able to kind of wrap it around here. And what we're actually getting is this looks way too bright now. Right? This is where ratios matter depending on how somebody's turned or facing. So I like this because I always do this kind of lighting at the end, so I can't not do it. But what we're going to do is I'm going to take my beauty dish, which is way too bright, in my A group, and I'm going to turn it down two stops. This is where getting the feel of it works. Um, and then I'm going, to have, I'm going to take my C light, which is the background light, and I'm going to actually turn it up one stop. I'm going to have her look this way, change my composition slightly, and boom. Right, and we can see how using the same lights, oh, this is nice, okay, good. This is good. Now, I'm just gonna take this back, you can see her, right, I got the right, yep, okay. You can see, I'm gonna take this background light, and I'm just gonna turn it a little bit more towards her, basically what I said not to do before, because again, there's no rules ever, always. Okay, I just turned it, I didn't change the power, I'm just changing its position. You see, I got like a better line, now I want the light on her nose because it's creating this almost like a cyberpunk vibe. And I think, just because, I'm gonna spin this one around, the beauty dish, and I'm gonna throw a little bit of a gel on it because we're going cyberpunk now. So I'm getting a gel. Admire that picture of Marissa. <clears throat> you have to be very punky. I feel like cyberpunk will be Purple, and the reason why I say that is because the purple gel is the first one that I found. I make all decisions based on the first thing I find. <laughs> uh, hmm. Okay, best way to do this is gonna be tape, I think. Let's switch to the camera. All right, never put your coffee on top of the computer like that. Huh. Who puts a roll of tape back in the thing with nothing on it? Wow. Wow. Like, I don't even understand the point of that. All right, we're just going to stick it. It's a Brooklyn light mouth. A Brooklyn knuckle. A Brooklyn knuckle. All right. All right, I'm just kind of jamming this in here. So this is not going to be perfectly purple, but it should give us a little bit. Yeah. All right. It's not perfectly purple, but we're going for it. Not changing any settings. She's gonna look robotic and powerful. <laughs> there we go. That's it. Womp, 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 womp. And there she is, right? We've got a different vibe, a different feel. I feel like I want a little bit more light on the back of her head over here. And all I have, I'm gonna basically do what I said not to do, and I'm gonna use a hard light. Because again, every rule is only a rule until I say it's not a rule anymore. <laughs> People learning the rules of photography Yeah, do not learn the rules of photography. <laughs> okay, this is gonna spread out way too much, I'm sure, but I'm gonna give it a shot. It's hitting the background a little bit, which isn't ideal, but you know, let me put a grid on it. Can you see me? You can't see me. Let me do this. Okay, I just want to, I'm gonna do exactly what I said not to do. I mean, I could put the strip bank on there, I suppose. <laughs> but honestly, for this setup, I think using the grid is better because I want not perfect, right? I want harsh. I want kind of uncomfortable uh, reflection on the back of her head because she's, you know, a cyber and punk.
I am not very punk. You may have noticed that. <laughs> okay, that is the B light. I'm just gonna make it, I'm gonna set the power for that. I'm, I have set it to, so just minimal power. Oh, not enough. Okay, I'm gonna take that light and I'm gonna turn it up back where it was. There we go. All right, so what we've done here now is we've built consistency. Even though we're using two light sources, we have this and this, right? I kind of wish this had a better cutoff, but I don't really have the tool to do it, unfortunately. Well, you know what I do have the tool. I can do it, I'm being lazy. See, Seth, Seth would like start taking stuff out of the closet. <clears throat> Let me use the softbox. I thought the grid was gonna work, but it didn't work. All right, so this is now the strip bank. I know I'm on her picture of her, so you can't see me very well. I'm gonna take this strip bank and I'm gonna basically put it kind of like where the other light is, except on the other side of her, obviously. Slide it over a little bit because I wanna get a bright light behind her. I'm gonna turn it up two stops because of the distance. Again, I'm, at this point, I'm just using the inverse square light. Here's where a light meter would be. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Ah, the background's so bright. All right, one more second. Let me get this. I think I got too much spill in the background. <clears throat> so in order to overcome that, I'm gonna move the light just closer to her and turn the power down significantly. Like that. Is that in the shot? No, it's not. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, so let's walk through this. Here's the final shot. Hopefully, we got some comments. <laughs> Mr. Selfie could be used for nose hair trimmer, yeah, exactly. Uh, Minolta auto meter F, oh, that nice. Yeah, that's also, I actually also have a Minolta auto meter F, auto meter, auto meter F, 3F, I should say. Dice man, uh, you're only saying that because Seth isn't there. If he was, he would say Daniel. <laughs> uh, right, okay, so, rules have been broken, shots. Yes, Marissa is always on. That's why I keep her here. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Okay, so lots of rule breaking comments. So here we are. And there's lots of little things you can do to finesse your shots. But we had a concept. The concept was I have a few minutes left, so I need to do something. And we just basically had her turn, and also to show like what the other light would look like. We had her turn towards the other light, and what did we get? Garbage, right? Because this is just a hard light coming from a bad direction. That's just not interesting at all. So what I did was I tried to mess with the ratio. This was better, right? This gave us a little bit of a flavor, but not as much as I'd like. So I brought the other light around. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> to create light across her nose, to create some depth there. And then I decided that I wanted some color, which we have here. And I thought that didn't look bad. But I really wanted something with some, you know, we shot a few there, some more depth. We got this. And then I didn't like the background being too light, so I moved the light in closer using the inverse square law. And now we have a light that shapes her uh, cheekbone there, shapes it there. And again, we have this idea, bright, dark, coming across to neutral, to bright, back to dark. So we have this movement. The movement is what creates the three-dimensionality. And that's basically where we're at. So you've got drama for your mama. For your mama. You know, or you have... A balanced light here. That was actually with, yeah, that's just the two lights. Hold on. That's not right. Did we, did we actually get a normal shot of it? Yes, we did. Okay. Huh. And there it is with kind of nice, balanced, clean light. So, again, same three modifiers, just used in slightly different ways, but using the same idea. Even though these shots are vastly different, they're using the same concept. This idea of bright to dark to neutral, bright to dark. Bright to dark to neutral to bright to dark, and that's creating 
the, uh, the spread of light, the balance, if you will. Okay. Talk inverse square for the masses. Okay. Speed light. Okay, so uh, if you were to use a gridded gel on a smaller source light, a speed light, does the stacking order matter? Stacking order. Use a gridded gel on a smaller source. Okay, so I think I understand that question. So two things, which we'll cover really briefly. One is inverse square. So I, I say that <laughs> basically the inverse square law means the closer you put something, the brighter it gets and the more rapid the fall off, right? So moving the light close to her made it brighter, which it also made the fall off, that is the light to reach the background, uh, darker. That's basically how that worked. That's why that was using the inverse square law. There's lots of videos about it. So it's, that's basically what it is. I, I used to, you know, back in the day when we didn't have lights that adjusted intensive of stops, that's how we would do things. We'd be like, oh, it's just a tiny bit too bright move it back. The problem with doing it that way is that when you move your light, you are changing its effective size and the angle it's striking the object. So it will change the light beyond just its brightness. So you have to consider all of that when you're doing it. In this case, I wanted all that. So it worked for me, but it, you know, that's the thing. Uh, insofar as, what was the second question? <laughs> there was another question I thought was good. Um, oh, the speed light. So all you really have to be concerned with when you are lighting something as far as the hardness, softness where you put things is this, right? It doesn't, you can see me, right? Yes, it doesn't matter what's behind this. This one foot by three foot strip of fabric is all that matters. Speed light, 5,000 watt second light, LED light, Profoto light, Godox light, Dynalite, Hensel, right? Doesn't matter. Five speed lights, 10 speed lights, as long as it hits this here and spreads the light out evenly, this is effectively my light source. So you don't really have to worry about that. If you're gelling a light, if that's the question, I find, some of you may disagree with this, I find it's easier to gel the light and then put it into the softbox. Then every bit of light that's touching the softbox is gelled. Now, movie light guys, do not do that, and the reason why, or that maybe, maybe they do it now, is because hot lights, you can't put the chill right against. So they would put it on the outside of the softbox. A lot of people see that and they go, oh, well, you're supposed to put it on the outside of the softbox because it makes it even. With flash, it's not that big of an issue. If you put it right against the flash, assuming you're not shooting super fast or have the modeling lights on, you should get nice, even color. You don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Gosson, that's well before my time. Okay, can I put a link for the two umbrella setup? I have no idea, where did we do that? Was that an Adorama? I think it might have been on your channel. It might have been on my channel. I think it was my, my link. Yeah, we did it on yours, right? Yeah, it's, it's a Mentoring Marissa. It's like a beauty blade thing. Go, look up Mentoring Marissa uh, Daniel Norton and you'll find it on my channel. There's only like six or seven of those videos and it's one with two umbrellas. You can't miss it. I don't, I don't remember where stuff is. But if I can find it, I'll put it up, but it, uh, I probably will not remember to do it. Uh, sorry, Deborah. I, well, you know, let me see if I can find it really quickly. Because, because I am, because I, I, I will forget. Let me just quickly see if I go here. YouTube. <laughs> Obsessive watching this is going to kill me. All right, let's see. Daniel Norton. Mentoring Marissa. Beauty, oh, I totally spelled beauty wrong, that's okay. okay. That's not it. Was this it right here? With the... Uh, with, with Lee? With Lee? This is a real b &H customer. Oh my God, it's a B&H commercial. Oh, Just don't look at it. Oh my God. Blasphemy. Ah! All right, skipped it. I don't know if it was this one. She has like little bits of freckles and stuff which are really yeah. nice. We want to see no, that's just using regular umbrellas. This is not it. I don't know. It's somewhere on Adorama, probably. Sorry. I don't know people. <laughs> I do not know. Uh, let me just do a quick... Uh, I, 
think it's called Simple Beauty or something like that. Look, the first thing that comes up is Dan Norton Beauty Dish. Apparently, that's a common search. Uh, secrets, how to use a beauty dish. Could that be it? Did we do it live? I don't think we did it live. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I swear I did it. If I didn't do it, I will... Uh, do it again. We'll do it again. We'll do it again, and we'll use a light meter. I promise you, we will do those two things. Uh, yeah, I can't, I can't... If I can find it later, I'll throw it up there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, now he's jumping up down. Yes, the, the, nobody heard that commercial playing. Uh, it's a great format. Okay, thank you. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'll try to find the thing. I cannot remember exactly what it what it's called, but in any case, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Adorama TV. It's a really good channel. Lots of good stuff, including uh, live streams from myself and Gavin Hoey, who was on here earlier. The best, with apparently a super super long tether cable. So I need to find out where he got that because I'm always tripping over mine. This is Marissa. You can find her at marissa.roper. Not Marissa Roper because that's somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Daniel Norton, photographer. Make sure that you like the video if you haven't already. Did I say that already? Subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks with something new. So I'll see you soon. And now pretend like I just cut there because I have to put the screen up. Graphics. Save. All right, that's the thanks for watching graphic. That should be good.